hello bestie it's b here to tell you everything a best friend should because i love you now the besties are always in my dms asking this question how did you get started in social media and i love you guys but i have to chuckle at the question it is literally the most frequently asked question with the answer you don't want to hear i just Start it. But if things were that simple, I wouldn't have a YouTube channel, okay? It's obviously complicated. And there's no difference between you and I. I'm not more talented than you. I don't have more resources than you. I simply started. And I got ahead because I started. Now, I understand that there are many things that can get in the way of hitting the start button in whatever it is for you in life. I'll refer to social media in this video just because that's what's relevant to me with you guys most of the time but this is a common problem in so many areas of our life where we just keep thinking about the things we want to do and not executing but as i said you have to remind yourself that there is no difference between you and the people who are doing the things you want to do the only major difference is that you haven't taken the step sure some people might have more steps to take because they started in a place with less resources some people might have an advantage but the bottom line is you're sitting there wasting your time thinking about how to start to the point that you're not starting and that's why you're not actually getting ahead okay so let's talk about all the reasons why you're having trouble getting ahead and getting started when it comes to being a youtuber i feel like people seek this formula they seek some kind of equation that's gonna make you feel like there's a certain pathway to whatever it is for you let's just say being a youtuber in this case right because Everyone always wants to know, how did it happen for you? And there is no secret formula. There is no secret formula. There have been so many cases of how people have become YouTubers. There are thousands, probably hundreds of thousands of creators on this platform who are podcasters, YouTubers, whatever. And I guarantee you, they don't all have the same story. I know some YouTubers that can post once a year, literally once a year, and their engagement is insane, but they've built this empire on posting very very little content and and what do you hear all the time oh you got to post a million videos and you got to do this and that the rules are what you make it okay I know people who do post a million videos and that's what helped them get to their point of being a youtuber but what I'm saying is neither was right something worked differently for each person and I think that the issue with a lot of you guys in whatever field it is is that you're looking for a specific answer you're looking to be validated in how to get started and I want to word this correctly that in a very sneaky way this is a form of self-sabotage because you're looking for someone to validate how hard you think it is that way there's this excuse for you not to start oh yeah you gotta post a million videos to be a youtuber okay cool so I don't have the time to do that so that's why I'm not gonna be a youtuber that's just an example but you see what I'm saying we sit here asking all these questions to people who have the things that we want and for what it really Really doesn't matter the point is you need to take a step you need to take ownership of the things that you want and understand that there's no right answer to every single thing that you want to do you can create the answer you can maybe create a pathway that hasn't been done before but you've got to open up your mind to the possibilities of how things can be done and you don't need to look around to see how it needs to be done you can do whatever you want in the way that you want and I always say refer back to the affirmation that your success is inevitable that is like my go-to because it always reminds me that it doesn't matter what step I take, what step I don't take, I will get to where I want to be because that is my destiny. It is meant for me, so it's going to find me regardless of the pathway that I take. Sure, I might end up going a long route on an occasion, or I might end up taking the expressway on some. That's not for me to worry about, though. I'm going to do what's in my control. I'm going to take the steps that I can at whatever phase of my life that I'm in. When I did not have, you know, the platform that I have right now one common thing I hear is like I don't have time to be a podcast or YouTuber like you know I have a full-time job and I'm not invalidating that you don't have time but I didn't have time either when I started I had weekends and I had after work and sometimes I didn't even have weekends my weekends were fucking stacked let me tell you you can even ask AJ the weekends I was grinding okay and sometimes after work I would go take photos like I was just making content I didn't know where it was going I didn't know if 
if what I was doing was the right path or not. I just knew that I needed to start making content. I went from taking Instagram pictures to having literally built a career for myself through YouTube. I wasn't even making videos at the time, but the fact that I took a step and just started to pick up a camera, started to get familiar with being in front of the camera through pictures and networking with other influencers in the area who had similar interests. That was the most important part of that. It wasn't that I was making videos at that time. I wasn't even really practicing being a YouTuber and to be honest with you, I did not think I was going to be a YouTuber. And I tell you guys all the time, my dad, he's like prophetic or whatever. He told me I was going to be a YouTuber before I was a YouTuber. And I actually got mad at him because I was like, nobody's going to be a YouTuber that hasn't already gotten started. Like I thought I missed the wave. He told me that in the era of like the Emma Chamberlain's blowing up and like all these people who had ridiculous platforms. And I was like, dad, that ship has sailed. And here I am. He was right. So what I'm saying is don't sell yourself short. Take any step. Anything that feels good, I want you to follow the feeling because when you're following the feeling of something feeling good, you are getting closer to the thing that you want. When you feel the resistance, when you feel a disconnect, when you feel like something is just like not working out, that's when you need to shift your plan. All those things kind of happen to guide you. What's meant for you will not feel forced. It's gonna happen in kind of a flow state for you. No secret formula. I don't wanna hear that anymore. Mm, mm. I'm about to get mad about this one because it's like, why do I see the potential in you guys more than you see it yourself? Y'all really think people who are talented just woke up talented. People who like have the careers that they have, y'all really think it just happened? Are you kidding me? No, no. Okay, let me just use myself as an example. My YouTube channel has gone through so many phases, okay? I was like a vlogger for a second. I was doing like tutorials for a minute. I was like showing you how to bleach jeans at one point okay listen it took me trying a bunch of shit to get here and when I was going through those things I kind of thought man I'm just not really meant for this I'm not really talented that was never the problem I had not put in the hours okay maybe it's more of a traditional take but you guys we can't skip out on like actually becoming better at things it is possible to become better at things put in the time you don't have to be good at it when you start do you think all these athletes just woke up great there's like a ridiculous stat for how many hours lebron james and kobe bryant some of the greatest athletes put into their craft hell michael jordan didn't even make his like middle school basketball team so what's your excuse i'm tired of it if you decide that you're not meant for it then baby you aren't because if you don't believe it then nobody will you have to have the just smallest seed of faith that you can get better at what you want to do so that you can give yourself permission to get better you give yourself the permission to make the mistakes but so many of you guys I'm talking to myself too we just want to wake up being great and particularly with social media the catch with social media is that in order for you to get better you have to get better publicly you have to mess up publicly you have to be cringy publicly but some of y'all just want to be like y'all just want to have it no like I'm telling you that's very rare I don't know any creator that hasn't had a video that's just like eh, you know but that's part of getting better and real recognize real we respect that some of your favorite musicians have had those phases. There are literally like videos of Halsey in the mall singing and she does not sound like she does today. Okay, that's called resources and practice and resilience and dedication and discipline. People who you see who are famous now had to start somewhere. Lady Gaga has a classmate who went on a podcast and talked about how Lady Gaga was literally Lady Gaga in high school before anyone believed she was Lady Gaga. She would sing and play the piano at school. Nobody at the time was appreciative of that because, you know, when you're just trying to go to school and you probably don't even want to be there, the last thing you probably want is some teenage girl belting. Okay, so she was probably not totally appreciated during that time. But what I'm saying is homegirl was putting in the hours. She was putting in the time. She knew she was a superstar before anyone did. And now she's Lady Gaga, right? But at that time, nobody knew. She was on this like prank show. It was like on MTV. I forget what it's called. It wasn't punked. It was before before she was famous this is like a few years before her debut with but 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 i think that song poker face and 
she just looked totally different you guys it's just like the evolution of who she was then to now really shows that this girl nobody helped her get to where she is today okay she put in the time one more example for you doja cat just because it's kind of funny doja cat's been putting in the work too she's been like putting out her music she had like the viral hits here and there and it wasn't until really tiktok blew up that she blew up because the songs really trended a lot but before that she was not the doja cat you see today even in terms of appearance talent just everything has evolved for her and she was very notorious for having a tall wig okay but my girl was resilient she didn't care about all that and yeah people might laugh at her now but she's in her bag what, what are you gonna say so my point to you is you may not be as talented as you want to be but that is not what's stopping you what's stopping you is the fact that you don't have the will or the belief that you can get better and you don't give yourself permission to look like a fool you need to be okay with looking a little a little wacky you need to wholeheartedly accept the fact that you are gonna suck you are going to suck for a while and you need to accept it because here's the thing if you go into this with the idea that you are going to flop and flop hard until you get the swing of things you'll fear it less okay because so many of us have that fear of being seen because we don't want to mess up we don't want a track record of just like not being perfect online like we don't want to give ourselves the space to learn how to be great right so this idea of failing is like the biggest fear right but imagine if you just like went in knowing that you were going to be like the cringiest ever for a little bit and that's okay because you know it's going to pay off ahead of time i think if we accept the fact that it's not going to be a picture perfect process you will fear it less in my experience typically with fears if i just go ahead and address them and understand that it's not the end all be all i'm good there are plenty of people online who don't have that thing where they care what people think and they are the most entertaining to watch i'm telling you those are the people i like to follow i don't care what anyone thinks about them i love following people who don't give a fuck about what you think and you can tell when someone genuinely does not care i admire it i'm still working on it i've come a long way right but i'm not perfect i still get self-conscious i still walk on eggshells cancel culture will scare the shit out of you but just do your best and most of you some of you aren't even online with what you want to do so you don't have to worry about cancel culture but what i'm saying is you need to give yourself space to mess up royal mess up because messing up is a key step in getting better you can't get better unless you learn unless you mess up and figure out what doesn't work sometimes you have to do the process of elimination you have to figure out what the hell is not working for you so that you can figure out what does work for you but if you're too worried about flopping and whatever it's not gonna happen okay ultimately the bottom line is that there's someone out there who doesn't care that they're gonna fail that's why they're getting ahead i think there's also a misconception with the fact that people think they need certain things to get started youtube is the best example oh my god because it is you should see my dms you guys i can't even get to all the people who ask me this and you know what i think i'm gonna make a guide on like content creation itself because people spend too much time worried about the wrong things especially as it relates to being like a content creator they want to have a specific camera a specific tripod they want to have the specific this that computer editing software none of it matters literally who's a good example of this uh bretman Ross those of you who are like og og bretman rock like i'm talking 2000 i don't even know maybe like six when he was doing makeup tutorials and literally filming on like a toenail and i know the time at the time like you know cameras weren't what they are today but what i'm saying is that doesn't matter and it really honestly never mattered i love bretman rock but his camera quality did not get good until like his recent years as a youtuber it was always kind of shitty because nobody cared and he still had hundreds of thousands millions of people who wanted to see him because what he's interesting he's fun he's just entertaining you are limiting yourself with the rules that you create do you think bretman rock was like i don't have the right camera i can't do this no he was just like i love myself i'm cute like <laughs> let's do a makeup tutorial and that's the vibe people felt that's the energy people caught is that he loves himself and he's also hilarious and so fun that's what people liked the personality side so if you have that it it doesn't matter i have seen people with the best possible equipment and they completely lose themselves when the camera turns on hi welcome to my youtube channel 
today we're going to stop now who on earth do you talk to like that in your real life and then you wonder why nobody wants to subscribe because you aren't being yourself and you think that all these little things matter you think the camera matters the whatever no show up show up and be yourself be unapologetic and stop worrying about what people think about you that's what people want to see and in every area of your life no matter what industry you're in or what you're trying to get after and get ahead in you just have to show up and be true to who you are it's not about the resources there are so many people who are going to have an advantage on you but if you always focus on the advantage you don't have you would never get anywhere and that's why i said in another video i refuse to talk anymore about the influencer industry in terms of the discrepancy. I refuse because it's not serving me anymore. It's not. I'm not here to fix it. I'm here to be me. I'm here to help people like you. And that's what I'm going to do. And I'm going to figure out how to make that happen regardless of who's mama's algorithm because I'm tired of focusing on it. And for a while I made that the issue. Like, ugh, I don't have the connections or resources to like do this. No, I'm just going to be a better creator. I'm going to be the absolute best creator I can be. And that's how I'm going to get ahead. I'm not going to worry about the rest. Can't control it. So why let it take up space in your mind? So the failure to launch is a really common thing, right? And I think there are some key common factors that play into that. Or should I say like there are some key personality types that fall into the failure to launch category. Let's go over a few that are really common. I'm going to start with you, my little perfectionist. Yes, those of you who want to be so perfect, refer back to the beginning of this video and watch it 50 more times. You need to give yourself space to look like an idiot, to completely flop, to completely mess up because you will not get better until you do. It is inevitable that you need to learn through failure. So stop it, my little perfectionist. Get over yourselves. With my perfectionist, I also want to say this. You and your little 12-step plan got to go, okay? Nobody needs your 12-step plan on how you're going to execute things. I want my perfectionist to listen up here. I want you to create step one and stop. Stop there. Get step one because you guys make this 12 step plan and you get you overwhelm yourself why do I know that because I am one I've had to completely stop doing that sometimes I'll just do it because it's like a, a little itch I can scratch on my brain it's kind of fun but like I don't abide by it anymore I'm just gonna take a step and then I'm gonna see what happens there and then I'm gonna say what next step feels right what makes sense to do now and then I take it from there now not everybody needs to do that but you perfectionists need to do that some of you need a 12 step plan okay but some of you don't and it's the perfectionist because if you guys make a 12-step plan, you will want to abide by all the steps. And then what you do when you try to abide by your plan is you block off the ability to adapt to adversities because you're so focused on your stupid little plan. I love you, but seriously, switch it up a little bit. Next up, self-sabotagers. Okay, so you guys love to be your own villain. Your red flag is procrastination, okay? You will sit there and think of all the things you want to do. You'll look at everybody online doing the things you want to do and you won't do it. By the time you look up, the day is gone and once again, you did not execute. What I need my self-sabotagers to to do is put the phone down get rid of the distractions i want you to be so real with yourself and figure out what environment you need to put yourself in to execute if being at home is not serving you i need you to go to a coffee shop and work do something okay but grow up be so for real with yourself i need you to literally gentle parent yourself like if you had a child who was doing the things you were doing and they weren't completing the things they need to complete what would you do i need you to do it to yourself okay because you're sitting there just hmm Huh. cleaning your house when you know you should be doing other things. I know, because I do it too. But can you be like, sometimes it takes a little gentle parenting. I've been doing that to myself. In the mornings, when I don't want to get up. I saw some girl on TikTok to it. I know you don't want to get up, Bria. It's time to get up. You have 10 minutes, okay? And then we got to go. I'll do anything. Nine times out of 10, when my self-sabotagers actually start, they already, they realize it wasn't that bad. So it's really the start for you guys is big. It's big. So sometimes you have to force yourself into some kind of environment or situation where you can start or surround yourself with people that will help you start. So maybe they're already doing the thing you want to do. Okay, hang out with them. Maybe working from home 
is not serving you. Okay, maybe go to a coffee shop and, and get going. I don't know. That's for you to figure out. And here's the thing with the lack of starting in general, no matter if you're a self-sabotager or a procrastinator, the issue for you guys is that you have not created a sense of urgency so that you will actually start. Part of starting is also creating a change, creating a new version of yourself that does not exist yet. Sometimes starting something means you cannot act the way you do right now. The thought patterns you have, the behavior you have is not going to get you to where you want to go because you're living in one parallel universe when what you want requires you to be a different version of yourself with new thoughts, new habits, and that exists in some other universe. But you've got to get there. You've got to create that urgency. And if you don't know how to do that for yourself, that's when you start something and stop. Or you start something and you end right back up at square one. You start something, you self-sabotage. Keep going in circles. I'm going to refer back to a digital guide that I recently made. It's about creating change. It's called the roadmap to change. And a big portion of that guide focuses on how you can create that urgency for yourself. We all have something that pushes our leverage that makes us actually want to change. And some of us haven't figured out what is it that actually is going to be that moment of leverage to get me to change. But we all have something that's going to push us to finally make the change. But sometimes you have to dig deep to figure out what motivates you. What is it actually that's gonna get you to do the thing and do the thing forever? Not just one time, not just that vicious cycle. What is that? So in my change guide, that's what we work on. We get to the real nitty gritty shit. One of the biggest steps is finding your motivator and creating a sense of urgency for yourself. Once you have that, you have control over yourself again. The guide is in the description if it's helpful to you. Now, some of you have terrible self-confidence okay this was a big issue for me last year so i love this one but your perception of yourself is huge in terms of starting because to start something that would mean that you have to believe in yourself that would have to mean that you think you're worth having the thing that you want that would mean that you thought you were worthy and some of us don't so sometimes it's not really about the action itself it's about these subconscious things floating in the back of our mind that we don't even know we're there maybe from childhood maybe someone bullied you you're holding on to stuff that you need to let go of and you need to rebuild your relationship with yourself and understand that you are worthy, you deserve everything you want, and that you are fully capable of doing it if you would get out of your own damn way. So part of it is confidence. You have to work on your confidence and heal your relationship with yourself because you are your biggest advocate and you have to be your biggest fan. Nobody else is going to believe in you unless you do first. And last but not least, my indecisive besties, we're going to have to get it together, okay? My issue with you guys, love you is that you are always looking around at what's going on with other people to the point that you can't focus on what do you want particularly with social media this is really tricky so many of you who want to be content creators you need to stop looking around you need to stop focusing on what's going on with every other creator because it's not going to be the same for you you're going to have your own special unique path so regardless of what you're doing you need to get clear on what it is you want for me last year I got really caught up in the comparison game where it was like one second I was like this is what I want for myself then I would see another creator have certain opportunities and I was like no I want to do that too and it was constantly just like going from one thing to no no I want to do that no I want to do that I could not keep it straight and at the end of the day I was like what do I want what do I want if I shut my phone off <laughs> what do I want if all the noise went away and I realized that half the things that I thought I wanted just because someone else made it look cool that's not what I wanted for myself my definition of happiness or success or just like having fun is not going to be theirs and is it your ego that's trying to make the decision for you or is it you that's what you need to decipher and you need to be clear about what it is you want because you can't get ahead in something if you don't have clear direction. If you're sitting here going after all these various things, you'll never get ahead because you're not even staying on track with one thing. You're getting distracted. Focus on what you want, what really matters to you. If nobody was looking, what life would you want? If nobody would judge you or nobody cared, what is happiness for you? What is success to you? What is a fulfilling life to you? Have you even thought about it or defined it? That's where you have to start. So truly getting ahead is not what you think it is. It's a matter of getting started. And so many of you are standing in your own way because I'm telling you right now, nobody can stop you from starting except for yourself. There is always a step that you can take in the direction you want to go. 
always. I would bet my kidney, whatever. I would bet something big that there is one step you can take right now. Just one. It doesn't have to be big. It can be little, but there's something that you can do. And that's what you need to reflect on. Don't let yourself convince yourself that there isn't anything you can do because that's just not true. So I hope this helped you guys. If you liked this, remember to give us a five-star review. Leave a comment. Leave a thumbs up. Help us out. And when you share these episodes and when you share the podcast versions, it really helps us. It's been helping us grow so much. So if you enjoy these, please support the channel and the podcast by sharing and tagging and letting all your friends know that this is good it's not crap okay so thank you guys for the support it really means a lot and let me know in the comments what videos you're feeling because I'm also coming up with the second quarter of the year content which is kind of crazy q2 is already coming up what do you guys want to see let me know in the comments I'm here to help but as per usual I love you guys thank you so much for listening and tuning in it really does help us out when you guys share show up every single week and tune in so thank you for that and as per usual i will see you guys next week 